Good morning. Good morning. Oh, <laughs> got a bit of cable showing. Hello there. How are you today? Come on in. I've been scrambling. I had loads of time and then suddenly it was like, oh, I'm late, I'm late. I'm late for a really important date. Come on in. It's good to have your company. How are you today? How are you today? All good? Mm hmm Come on in. Good morning, Leslie. Yeah, we had a, oh, here they come. Good to have your company. It's a bit overcast here today. Uh, Oh, we've got to do something really lovely today, though. I was excited. I had to ring Paul and say, look, I've got two really good things. Which way shall I go? Which, which road shall I go down? So we had a little conflab about it. And now I know. Good morning, good morning. Come on in, grab a seat. I hope that the weather is reasonable where you are. I, uh, I am happy to report that the trip with my mum to Marks and Spencer's was a resounding success. It really was. She was so happy. You know, I guess, well, I was too. It's the first time I've been to a proper supermarket. So, uh, yeah, I was so happy too. It was, uh, it was really cool. And, uh, and for the first time in history, <laughs> my mum spent more than I did, <laughs> which was great. It was lovely to see. And uh, Dave hung out with my dad while we shopped and the great thing was there was a lovely lady at the till and she said that because we went in the evening and she said and this may be of interest to you too the evenings are really quiet honestly the shop was empty there were maybe 10 10 shoppers in there it was really quiet this is at Hempstead Valley the one that we used um over in the Medway towns but uh the, the shelves were all fully stocked but there was just nobody there. And she said, it's always like that. You know, two o'clock in the afternoon, rammed. But she said that people are cottoning on now that are a little bit apprehensive about being in, in, in busy shops. Um, but they hadn't cottoned on last night. Uh, and she said, it's always like that, about six, seven o'clock in the evening, which is really good to know, you know. So we put our masks on and off we toddled. And, um, and we were one aisle in, mum said, can we come back? <laughs> because she'd bought about everything in the aisle. And I said, yes, mum, we, we can come back as often as you like, dear. And um, so she, she slowed down with the spend then. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd just have an eat -son for the next month. That was funny. But it's well worth knowing that, you know, if you're a bit apprehensive about venturing out, the shops in the evening, well, you know, might want to check ahead, but seems to me that uh, and according to the lady at the two who's been there since february the evenings are always really good so interesting i know when i lived in the states i always used to shop at night because they were open 24 7 and uh, i always used to go out at nine ten o'clock at night to do my shopping it works for me anyway come on in it's 10 o'clock Good morning and welcome to the Shack Shack. Safe, happy and creative. Stay home and craft. And so today I thought we'd, um, we'd have a look at what we did yesterday. And I, I noticed on Facebook that some of you are, are um, struggling. The baubles are a challenge. That's what we'll say. And, um, and that's okay, you know. It just takes a little, maybe takes a little bit of time, you know. Um, what's important is that we hang out. There are no experts here. Nobody's failed. There's not an exam. We haven't got, we're not having a bauble test tomorrow. <laughs> what a load of baubles that'd be. No, 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 no. It's just different, different things. And it's different strokes for different folks, isn't it? You see? And some people really like this sort of, doodling and pattern building and then other people are like, oh, I can't cope with it. It's just something for someone. Um, and, and so today, what I wanted to do was take the bauble that we did yesterday. Um, by the way, before I forget, Steve Ellen is in the building with you today. Good, good man. Um, welcome, Steve. If you've got any questions at all, if you're looking for the downloads, 
um, Steve just put a link up please and uh, people can print them off and if you haven't got them then you know all you have to do is privately send your email your mailing address send an email to Stephen with a V Stephen at claritystamp.com and he'll print them out the, the the templates that we've been using all week and he'll send them to you and that's of course free of charge and then that way you can join in later you know and um, yeah so what I want to do today is have a little recap are you ready what's the time a couple of minutes past and before I forget because I wanted to mention tomorrow because you know I do Ho Chanda television right smashing little channel and tomorrow I've got a mixed media show at nine o'clock I think I mentioned it yesterday and I'm going to mention it again so at nine o'clock I shall be um on hochanda.com so I hope that you can join me but what that means is um, the TV won't finish till 10 o'clock and I cannot flick all the switches between 10 o'clock and 10 o'clock to get back to here because it doesn't work so easily because it's a live Skype you see and there's a little bit of adjusting required so what I was going to suggest is that instead of at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning we meet at 10 30 and when you see what we're going to do you won't mind and the other thing is because you're going to come with me to to Ho Chanda and watch the mixed media show I know a lot of you will and then that will give you a chance to have a little um, little rejig um, and make a cup of tea before we start our doodle session at 10 30. how's that sound good good that's the best I can do and um, so let's have a look at what we want to do today you ready is the sound all right Steve please I think so and then uh, and then we'll have a look morning all oh, lots of shopping online well yeah yeah there is that especially at Clarity I love you Ken Kilminster <laughs> dull and dismal in Glasgow is it great day for crafting always got to turn it round. if it's raining outside then that's great because us crafters have got something to catch up always haven't we let's have a look at what we did yesterday and we'll have a little regroup so if you recall let me get my different glasses on yesterday we did this didn't we and um, and you'll see that I what we did was we changed the shape of the bauble a little bit and this is one of those baubles that dips right in but what I suggested was that we don't ink it up so the other th what we'd done before we'd we'd done the snowflake bauble hadn't we and then we'd inked up the outside and then we shaded it the advantage of inking up the outside is or at least having ink of some description is that when you go in with your pencil do you remember how we we're using our fingers well of course the outline if that were only pencil it wouldn't it wouldn't sit very tight would it so good good advantage to have um, a line um, and then what I'd suggested was do you remember that we do um, a bauble but for example without the outside and then the shapes themselves they actually create the the sh the, the snowflakes create the bauble don't they just by staying within the shape so that was the next thing that we did but the thing about that is you see because we haven't got a pronounced line around the outside then we have to create the line either with shade don't we or with color and so what I wanted to do today was pick a couple of colors and go to this one so let me show you where I, what I've done so far just so that you see I didn't do all of it I just did an echo of it so that you can see um, how you create the shape and the shade see the pearls around the outside and the does this it's starting to it hasn't it's not completed yet but this is inside you see how it's going in so if we if we look from here for example when we turn this round you'll see now that it's starting to really get that depth isn't it and and I've just concentrated I just kept intensifying this area so you can see exactly how you can build depth you know see now if this was a stamp if this were a stamp then it would be that's the thing about stamps 
you you get the outline don't you permanent like that then would be the black that you see here would be the stamp but the thing is that if you if you use a stamp just this is just a little aside but we're going to go there because you can do this kind of work with a stamp you just have to be a little bit more subtle about the line art makes complete sense right so let me show you for example if well, I did put something out. Right, let's just example. I digress, but it's worth having a little digression. Say, for example, we've got, a, this is from Linda's samplers. If you don't do baubles, you could do hearts, right? So I've taken a little stamp and I've stamped it with black ink. Okay, any, well, not this one, a different one. Right, now, this is black ink, clearly. This is black line art, clearly. So, but the thing is, if I wanted to get a, a more, you can't get a pencil ink pad, but you can certainly get lighter ink pads. So, for example, and you've also always got, see, so here are two ink pads that are brilliant. If, say, you want to do what I'm talking about here, this kind of thing, where you want the, the shape, but you don't, but you want to create the, de the depth with colour, then these two ink pads, if you're, you, if you're a stamper, these are great. It, one's warm, one's cold, if you like, right? So you've got a pebble beach and shadow grey. Now, if I take this one, for example, now I can, I'm going to stand for this one. I just want to show you how it works. I just, say I just want the outline. Okay, then what I'll do is, I, I don't want to go too much, so I'm just going to ink up, see if I ink up a lot, yeah, let's just do, st even though it's a, a, uh, a light ink pad, you'll see, right, it's still, even when heavily inked, it's still very l much lighter than black. And if, for example, this is where ink block plot comes from, let me show you. I'll take the same one again, ink it up again, right? If I go blot once, right, blot twice. See how much lighter it is now. And that now, if you go ink blot, because you're working with a light ink pad, especially say you're doing faces or something like that and you don't want, you don't want it to look too cartoony, then the trick is either to use lighter ink pads to start with, so you've still got the line, it's not completely disappeared, but it's not black black. If you've only got a black ink pad, then the trick is to do black blot, okay, ink blot plot, and then you will end up with a, a, a grey line, but it will be just a bit darker than that because it's a black. Black will it'll just be light black, okay. But what I wanted to explain was that if you're a stamper, then you don't always have to use um, bl black ink in the first generation. It, it does look, it's what we tend to go to, isn't it? Because it really makes the image ping. But you should try, and that's what we're doing here with pencil work. Rather than using black line art, what we're doing is we're using the colour now to bring out the shape and the lines, okay? So I thought that might be worth you know, because I know a lot of you, if, listen, clarity stamps are us. So my guess is that a lot of you good people who, who um, are in the Shack Shack, safe, happy and creative with me, are going to be stampers. And most of you, that'll be like teaching you to suck eggs, like you didn't know that. Uh, but it's worth having that information. If you're just coming into the stamp world, you know, you can either get light ink pads to start with, um, especially around the faces, because you still... With the faces, you probably still want the contours, but um, yeah, black just is too harsh. You can never be able to, to blend the black line art into the colour. Whereas what we're doing here, you see, we can really blend it in. And all I've used is, is the transfer. Do you remember when we did, the, we did it on there, didn't we? And then we transferred it right and that's how I ended up with that transfer and and that was enough for me to be able to see the shape of what I want to color in and what I want to bring out and there's something actually this is the one I used for this one there's something really um, cool you know you talk about the creative 
uh, the creative curve. It, when you first start, you think, well, this is rubbish. I did this morning when I was doing this early doors and I was thinking, this is rubbish. This isn't working. It's all way too grainy, way too grainy, way too grainy, way too grainy. And then I start, and then I thought, shut up, Barbara. <laughs> just stop saying way too grainy in your head and just start layering up the colour. And, and once I, I kind of honed in on one area and just concentrated on that, then I started to see the progress, you know. So it's a really interesting learning curve, this one, especially if you're, um, you know, experimenting with your colours as well. So this is what I want to do today. I want to take, um, I did, I think I suggested that we have this on card or on paper, penciled but not inked. And you know, listen, if, if you've got it in ink, it's fine, just carry on with that. There's no, there's no test here. You haven't, you know, you haven't flunked your exam just because you, you inked it and didn't wait for me. Um, the main thing is always that we just hang out together and have a reason for getting up, okay? That's the main reason. And what we do is a bonus. So let's get started. And I went with, interestingly, my first colour. I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll come in a little bit uh, tighter in a minute. But my first colour that I used was a flesh colour, believe it or not. So this around here, I thought, yeah, I want to go light, right? And I used the flesh colour from the Polychromo. Okay. So what you've got to decide first. Right, and then I used red. So light red, dark red, basically, is what I'm saying. And then I went in with Payne's Grey, which is one of those grey pencils from that little set of 12. See? And look at, as soon as I added a little bit of, I only did it in those two, on those two pearls. That's the only place where I've added Payne's Grey, a bit of dark depth. Isn't that mad? And that's, and when you, when you look at that, those are the two that really look like you could, you could pick them off. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's why I just did two, so I could show you the difference. <laughs> I love it. I really, I really love it. I started this morning and I was really anxious, like stupid, I don't know. You wake up like that, I can't help it. But what I can do is get my toolbox out and then I know if I do half an hour of this, it calms my mind, you know. So, have you got that? And have you, decide what colour you want your bauble to be. It could be any colour. It could be yellow, green, red, blue, purple, lilac. Pick your, pick your favourite colour. Orange, peachy. You decide. Light red, dark red. I pick that kind of red. Just pick any colour. Pick a colour, any colour. You can use your watercolour pencils. You can use your kids' pencils. You can use anything you like will work. Okay? Just get some colouring pencils out and let's have a go. And what we want to do is make the bauble get dimension. And we're just going to add depth as we go. And it's really, really good and therapeutic to do. Okay, so I'm going to use, I'm going for the red. And I'll start on a naked one. Uh, I won't start on one that I've already done. I'll hop across once you see how we add the shade. Yeah? I'm going to start in the same place you are. So let me just come in a little bit. Let me come in a bit closer. Everybody happy? You hear me all right? There you go. That would be good because that way you can see the one that I, well, I've done. Yeah? And you can see the one we're working on. I think that's a good idea, don't you? Right. So, because in a minute I think I might hop to this one. Otherwise I'll never get anything finished. Okay. Right, a bit of copy paper, just to check my colours. Okay. See, I think it's, uh, it's nice to be able to um, sketch something lightly and then start introducing... It's very, it's very arty, isn't it, to do that? So what we want to do is take the side of our pencil, get the light one out, and just use the side of your pencil. That's what we're going to do, the side, right? And the flat. So you might have to bring your fingers out a little bit and then just 
bring in your... See? Okay. Can you do that? And what we'll do is, we'll get in and we'll just come round here, just lightly. Let's get that basic colour down. Right, it won't take long to do this bit. It takes a while to get to that, to that depth, but you'll get there. It's just a question of... taking your time. Give time time. That's all. And you know like yes, the other day, when we were doing this particular bauble, remember how we did the pencil and then we took the eraser and we took out the colour? You can do that as well with polychromos. But what I would suggest is that you kind of make a mental note of where you want your light to be hitting. So for example, I probably, let me just come in, I probably want the light to hit about there. So I'm going to make like a, a mark. See that little triangle there? I know it looks a bit cro ropey at the moment, but say I put that there and then that's going to be, and maybe actually, see at this stage you can rub it out easily and it goes away. I might make a little triangle like there as well, like that. That'll do. So there's going to be a bit of light there. Yeah, and maybe a little bit, let's do one over here as well, like we did before. See, and then at least you know to stay out of that area. So the light's going to hit there. That's fine. Yeah? I'm not galloping, am I? <sighs> I hope not. Let's have a look. Good morning, everybody. Not doing much doodling this week, Catherine. That's fine, you know. That's absolutely fine. As long as you just hang out with us and know that you're not alone. And there are hundreds of people all over, all over the place in here today. Always are. Isn't that great? Gives me comfort. Right, so what we're going to do then is we're just going to pop that colour down in this area. All right? So round you go and you're going to go all the way through. Lightly does it with whatever the light colour is of the colour that you decided to make your bauble. Okay, round you go. Turn your artwork, make the artwork come to you and then just add your, your colour. See? It, in a way, the first layer, it just establishes where you're going, doesn't it? That's it. Right, so we know now that this is going to be, we're going to put a bit of pink in there, like that. Right, so we know now what we're doing. There we go. Don't need to race. Once we've got that layer down. Right, what colour have you picked? I can't wait to see your, your artwork. Okay, so we've got our colour down, yeah? But look, there's a long way to go, isn't there? But you you know that this is just, this is an hour on, that's all. That took me about an hour to get to that, not even, right? So now, let me stay over here with you. What we're going to do now is just let's work on the same area here, okay? So now, you just hold the pencil down a bit further, we'll put the next layer in. Okay, put the next layer in. So we're not using any ink at all on the line art. We're just using pencils. That's it. I, I actually, I, I outlined mine a little bit, but not because uh, I would. I would only do this so that I can see what I, so I can see it. I, I did it because you need to be able to see on the TV see, because otherwise it's quite difficult to actually see it is too faded yeah but you can see now see I've got I've established my lines okay once I know where everything is I can go in and add a bit more so they don't need to be that dark that's what I'm saying 
So maybe I want a little bit of light to hit here as well. So I'll just make a little mark there like that and just avoid it. Then I know. Just I can always fill it in afterwards if I choose to. But I reckon there would be a kind of a little bit of light there, don't you? Right, just put a bit of light down there. Like a kind of a shaft. I can always change my mind if I'm not sure. See? You can always rub it out if you... See how you can rub it out? I'm going to... Oi, hello. So what we're using is the... When you look at the... Where's my bit of copy paper? What we're doing is we're making a chisel, aren't we? See, so you're using the flat. Not the pen, not the line, look. You want to use the flat side. So you make a chisel so it's flat. And then if you want it, we've done this before now, if you want it to be sharp, then you turn it, don't you? And then you can use it like that, okay? Right, so what we want to do next is get with the chisel, okay, and add a little bit of colour in here. So let's get more, another layer. We'll just stay in this quarter, okay? We won't worry about anything else, we'll just stay in this quarter, because once you figure this quarter out, guess what? The rest is pretty much the same, just depends where the light hits. But the, but the intensity and the layering will all be the same. Right. Which pencils are you using? Are you using the pergoliners? Or are you using the polychromos? What are you using? Or have you got another set? Have you got something else? Doesn't matter what you use. It doesn't matter what you use. The technique's a technique, isn't it? Hey? Right, let's have a look. So now we're getting in on that edge. Okay. And then we'll put another layer in. So it, you can see how it's a bit grainy, can't you? So circular motions to get that colour in. See, because usually when we do colouring in, we're using the postcards, aren't we? So this time what we're doing is we're colouring in our own work. Makes a big difference. We're colouring in our own line art. That's a different thing altogether, isn't it? Everybody happy? We're doing all right? Eh? Come on then. See now, so also let's have a look at the inside here. If we look at mine here, you'll see that I start to establish the inside. So we're looking at this edge here on the outside of that. So what I've done now is I've flipped, the, I've flipped it around a little bit and I'm working with the, the sharper rather than the chisel. I'm, 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 I'm cutting in now, you see? Get a bit sharper there. See, and as soon as you do that, look, see how this, the depth starts to come. And then in the middle, what I want to do is, I will use the, when I say the sharper edge, I flip the chisel. So I flipped it, so now it's like that, right? And what I want to do is just go in the middle, just so that you see a result. Go in here, and you see the lines that we've already drawn? Just go along them, really lightly. Not all the way, just flick out like that, from the centre, and then flick. Right. And then... If it gets a bit dull, flick it again. Right, We can come in and do this much, much more, but it just will give you, you'll see immediately how it starts to look like depth. depth. It's, it's going in, right? As soon as you do this, you'll see it will change. So just get the chisel and then get the, the pointy, the pointy nib and then just flick out like that. Right, we're still using the fleshy colour, the light red, or the light green, or the light blue, or whatever it is you're using, the light colour. Uh -huh. And then you see on the inside, remember we did a double line around the outside of the... Let's just go in here now. And let's... What glasses have I got on? Let's put me other ones on. That's better. Right, I need to just re-establish my chisel. And then if you go wrong, just take it out again. 
And you, you'll know by now, uh, if you've been following the colouring s- sessions, which are every other week in, with the postcards, you'll know that you have to really um, work in layers and go very lightly. If you, if you press too hard, then especially the polychromos and the pergoliners, which are the pencils that, we, that I use, um, what you'll see is that they, they create like a seal. There you go. So we're just, just re-establishing those lines. You see, and when you do that, you're losing the grey lines and you're replacing them with... Right, there you go. So now it's starting to look... See how it's starting to look like it's going in? Yeah? Just take that edge. You can always put, sharpen your pencil if you prefer to. I find that you waste quite... Oh, excuse me. Sorry. I find that when you sharpen it, you tend to waste quite a lot of pigment. Getting a nib, getting a, a fine nib. Let's have a look. Okay, let's go again. Right. So we just want to come in here and just lightly... There you go. Just add a little bit of colour along that edge. Because we're going to stick to this quarter, aren't we? There we are. So the whole time, though, we're using... And you can see now that just a little bit of shadow there and a little bit of shadow here from the centre and you get that optical illusion. Now, can you remember where we bought, where we found the, the lines? They were on that template, the wheel one, weren't they? Which is the one that... This was the one. And so, the, just in case you're, you weren't here yesterday, what we did was we took our star that we made from the, the hexagon and then we used the lines on here to make the that illusion of that that concave element of those vintage baubles, you see? That's how we got those lines. But I thought if we want to make it look metallic, it will work much better if we don't do black. <laughs> yeah. And for those of you who, who are thinking, oh, I'm never going to get this, it's fine. doesn't matter because I... I, I have the means to make stamps, you know. <laughs> I reckon that we're going to get some nice stamps going here, some nice bauble stamps. Because hey? you, wouldn't, you wouldn't send out many Christmas cards if, if you actually hand-drew every single bauble, would you? <laughs> Unless you started in January for next year. Right, but you see how it's coming, look. It's definitely working, isn't it? So we've done, let's keep going around the bottom here. Actually, we're going to go all the way around with the light ones. There we go. Go around with the light colour again. OK. And you see, as you keep going, rather than press too hard, though, what we're doing is we're just adding another layer and another layer and another layer. But you see how it's quite grainy? You see? As opposed to that. That's um, easily resolved with our with these things. Do you remember we said we got these nibs for blending? These work like a treat. So that one's a black one. This one's a green one, but I don't think it will matter. That'll do. Right, you see, and then when I come in here, when I rub over... It smooths it out. It just pushes the pigment. It just starts to smooth it out a little bit. So I'm just going to do that now. I think we talked about it yesterday, about cotton buds, about perhaps using those. And these work like a dream, but you use what you've got in the cupboard. Right, let's have a look. So we'll just do a little bit of smoothing out, especially in this area where we want to add another colour. Let's just smooth this out first. Right, techniques, techniques, techniques. Okay, this is going well. Now, the next thing we want to do, let's advance to the next colour, shall we? You all right with this? Wait till you see what we're doing tomorrow. It's going to be so nice. But we have to slow down a little bit, you know. There's no point in, in 
chasing through this, is there? It's not the purpose. It's not the purpose. The purpose is to just chillax, practice. You see, it's like, it's not a performance, is it? It's, it's just practice. And um, it's like the piano. I've got a piano in the, in the dining room, you know? And if I play it every day for 15 minutes, my playing will improve. That's a fact, I know that. And it's the same with this. If you do a little bit of colouring every day for 15 minutes, or even an hour, wow, wow, you know, your colouring will improve. You won't go from not good to brilliant overnight. It doesn't work like that any more than I can go and sit at the piano, do an hour and think that I'm gonna be able to play Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. <laughs> I'll be able to play chopsticks really fast though. <laughs> <laughs> you get what I'm saying, you know? The more you practice, the better you get, and the better you get, the more you'll want to practice. And that's true too, isn't it? Right, come on, let's have a look at this. We're going for the darker colour now. Let's have a sip of tea, shall we? Slow this down, guys. Ah, nectar. Right. See, I like that all we're using is a couple of pencils and our own artwork. And the fact that this bauble got made by us from a couple of templates and a bit of tracing paper. You know, this is, this is arty, guys. This is arty stuff. Right, now I'm using a darker, I'm using red. What red should I use? Because I did this uh, deep scarlet. I'm using deep scarlet but you can use any red you like, because it won't be deep scarlet because I've toned it down with that fleshy color, see? But what I want to do now is use the deep scarlet to get the old depth going. So let's, let's start on the edge. Let's start on the edge along here, right? And now I'm going to go along here. I just want to establish that line Right, here we go, gently, gently. And I tell you what, I'm hardly touching the paper. I'm just literally, I'm almost levitating. It's that, it's that fine as I go. See how hard I could press? I'm pressing really, really lightly just to get that, sh establish the shape. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So here we go. And I want to get that lovely depth in that area there. Let's have a look. Like that. See? That depth. So to get that, I've got to go in with the red over the top. I'm deliberately going slower than I would. Because um, I don't want to race. See? And then I flip the pencil. I'm just establishing that shadow. See? Around I go. Okay. If I don't want to lean on that, then I can always use that. What's that thing that we always use? I'm going to lean on that. That's better. Right. So I lean on on lean on a bit of paper or anything. I've got a groovy guard. That's what I use from from parching. Right. In we go again. Little bit more pressure. Not so much pressure as another layer. There you go, let's call it another layer. But you can see how it's starting to come. And and because we put the light red down or the fleshy colour all over, it's a lot more forgiving, isn't it? To come in now with the darker colour. Right, there you go. So let's put that colour down. We won't blend it yet though. We'll just Keep it going. And the more you go over the same area. Do you remember when we did the hummingbirds? And lovely Dee gave us those amazing hummingbirds to colour in. And we went layer on layer on layer on layer, didn't we? See how it's coming now? Don't take long. Right, let's get that other red in here. Because this red is a bit peachy under here. So now let's get a bit of a bit of red going in there. Right, so what we're doing is we're establishing this pencil lines, aren't we? As if 
but without the black. Right, let's go around here now. Let's get these pearls going, shall we? Pearls. Look at them. Don't they look like real pearls? <laughs> right. These look like pencil marks and these look like real pearls. So how can we, let's just see what we can do. So we're going to put the lights coming from the top and we're going to put a little bit. It's exactly the same as what you would do with a gray light, a gray or a graphite pencil. Mm -hmm. So we'll go in there and we'll just add little shadow, drop shadow underneath. That's the first thing. We're doing lots of this. I mean, we did, do you remember the droplets, the water droplets? What, uh, Steve, can you remember which, I keep Steve Ellen on his toes here, can you find out which, um, which Shack Shack day, which episode it was that we did the water droplets? It would have been the week when we were under the water, uh, you know, in, in, in the, under the sea, that one, right? And it would have been like midweek, I would say. See if you can find the link, because they were a delight to do, weren't they? Right, so now we've got that, that red under there, okay, quite dark. And then what you're going to do is, this is easy, you just go like that, right, underneath, like that. And then as you come away, just get lighter. Just, it's good practice, you start like that quite dark underneath the pearl and then as you come away you just get lighter and lighter see until it disappears you just come away from the paper okay let's try that okay get your chisel you need your chisel edge okay cool chisel right and then we're going to go like this and then come away right here we go so what will happen as you do this they'll start blending the whole, the whole area will blend into depth, see? So now we're doing that, doing that. Right, now we got it. Okay. Quite cool, hey? Right, now, let's see. It's getting there. Let's darken the area underneath. So we're gonna use little circular motions now with a chisel edge, just to darken that whole area now, okay? Because it's going to be darker, isn't it? There we go. Another little layer. I think the trick is to know when to stop as well, isn't it? Just get another little layer of... be great to get these pearls out, see how they work. Right, I'm using the... the sharp area now, just to... And this is not dissimilar to what we did with the droplets. There, you see? So we're getting in real dark underneath the little droplets. Yeah, it's funny when you when you start to look at what we what we've already done in the in the shack shack, you'll see it's the same old trick, just a different different object or a different subject. Right. Everybody all right? Cool, I'll tell you what, there's nothing like it for distraction, is there? Look how it's coming now. Do you see what I mean about how when you... how when you, when you focus, it's so... Oh, there's nothing like it to relax, is there? Yeah. Let's see. Now I'll tell you what I'm going to do now, right? Because it's coming, isn't it? Look, hey, coming, coming, coming. Let's go back to that one. And let's take our blender, our, our blending pen, and let's just smooth this colour out now. And just get some of this colour going. See how it just tones it in? Right, so it's less gritty. We don't want gritty. I've never seen a gritty bauble yet. Right, we want it to be super smooth because it's glass, isn't it? Or, yeah, or, well, let's just say it's glass, not plastic. It's a beautiful glass bauble from Deutschland, from Germany. Right. Okay. So that's nice. It's nice. Eh? 
Okay. It's looking good. Isn't it? A bit darker. Now we can take the light colour again. And now we'll talk, we'll talk about the top part. See, because even though it's a light red, we still need to, still got to do something at the top like this. Let's have a look. Is your, is your pencil lines, I probably did them too dark so that you'd see them and now I'm wishing I hadn't. But it's all right, because I'm going to rub them out in a minute. You watch. Right. In fact, now's the time. I'm going to take the ball by the horns. Let me see if I can do this, because my pencils, I need to get rid of the pencil lines. Right, so I'm going to sharpen my eraser, my pink one. Right, it's clean. Make sure it's clean, Gray. It's clean. And then I'm going to just tease out the pencil work on the inside. Just get rid of it. Don't want it anymore now. It's done its job. Okay, that wasn't hard, was it? Let's get rid of it. Get my pencil. That's it. And then also, if I want it to be a bit harder, the top, I just snip off the top of the rubber so it's not all limp. <laughs> right, that's better. Now I can go again and I can really clean out those pearls. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Much better. Okay, so now I've cleaned out the pearls. Now I can get in with the colour to get these pearls going really well. Right, so now we want to establish the shape above with the, with the lighter pencil. Let's just get that colour going. Now we're rocking. Okay. They're coming now, aren't they? Eh? So we get that colour up there as well. Cool. Now the next thing we want to do, and this is, let's have a look at what I've already done so you see up close what we're going to do. We need to let it just, let it just focus. Right, have a look and you'll see that I've done like a little, little coloured smile at the bottom of each pearl. You see? It's just like a little smile. They look like little grinning faces. Yeah? All got light red lipstick on, look. You can, put, you can put little eyes on them. Don't. I mean, don't. I'm not suggesting you do. I'm just saying that's where we're going now, all right? So what... We, but there's a little white... There's a little white area between the base and the, and the little smile as well, his chin. There you go. Put little smiles in, like that. <laughs> Actually, it's really cool. Come on, put your little smiles in with the light red or the light green or the light blue, whatever your core. Doesn't that make a difference? I'll tell you what makes it do, it makes you smile when you realise you're just putting little grins on the on the pearls. <laughs> there you go. Little grins. And straight away, that makes them really, really you watch. Now they're all smiling at you. <laughs> Like that. It's cool. It's very cool. See, so now we've got our little smiling. Let's go in and have a look up tight. See if you've got the same as me on the one that we're working on, our work in progress. See the little smiles? Don't they look... Doesn't that look absurd? How, how three-dimensional that's made it. Eh? Considering that that's where we started with little pencil circles. Right, but now we're going to add the shade. Two things, two more finishing tricks, okay? So one, we're going to take our red, <clears throat> a dark red, and we're going to come in quite underneath again. Just give it a little tiny red drop shadow under there. That'll, and make that just blend out again. We're good at this now, come on, <laughs> aren't we? Is everything okay with the sound? Yeah? Good. I hope so. Right. I enjoy this. I enjoy this a lot. Right, so now we've done a little bit more depth underneath, and then we'll turn it round. 
and we'll put a little tiny flash of red uh, like a little bit of depth along the top as well just to define that's all like that don't need much yeah yeah, yeah. and then enter some sort of gray so i'm using Payne's gray i think that's the one posh Payne's. yeah i like Payne's gray it's not black it's just gray but there are loads of those grays you know there are loads of greys in, in in our little stash now, aren't there? Steve, uh, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, Steve will be able to show you where the greys are, if you need greys. You could use an HB pencil, whatever. Just get this little flash of grey underneath each pearl, like that. There you go. And straight away, just get a little bit of a... Shadow onto there. Just a little drop shadow. And the more of that you do, the more those pearls will jump. Look at that. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I think so. And then we'll just tone in that dark grey. I mean, I've been going really slowly because I want you to kind of work through the process. But when you start to, when you're on your own doing this and you, you just repeat the same thing all the way around, just remember that if the little smilers are here, the little smilers are going to be smiling all the way around from the same angle. You see? So they'll all be smiling exactly the same because the light's hitting from exactly the same place. Okay? Right. And then from the inside, like if you want to take, here we go now, the, the dark red we're going for now. Let me just take my, the dark red in the centre. And you may prefer, you could do this too, take a ruler. Where's my, my ruler's gone? I had loads of rulers and I've got no rulers. <laughs> take a ruler, make sure it's a clean ruler, Gray. Right, and then what we'll do is, you see, if you want, you can take your ruler and a sharp, and then just use your ruler to add a bit of a flash. Especially if there's some of the pencil lines are a bit faded, that's great. That's absolutely bang on. Just a little flash in the middle, right? Like that. Just always coming from the center. That's it. And the dark, it will get darker in the middle. Of course it will. See? So you can really, you see how you can make that? There's a combination of what you're doing here. You're coming in from the edge, like that. And you're, you're coming in from this edge. Let me show you. That's a little bit ropey, that one. I'm going to just define that line. A little bit better than that. That's better. See, sometimes you just need a little bit of help with a ruler, don't you? And then that really makes it pop now. Look. Boom. See? Yeah. Just a tiny little flash with the ruler. Go from the tip and come out. Oh, I love it. Love it. There you go. So we've done our baubles. Nice, isn't it? There you go. So that is how you can you can understand how the more the more of this you do, go lightly, go lightly, right? The light the light red will be your best friend on this one as well. There you go. Just keep coming out. Just and then sometimes a little bit needs to be a bit sharp, like a line rather than a. There we are. And then it looks as if it's really m glossy, okay? So, so that's that's going to be uh, beautiful. I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see your um, your artwork on Clarity Worldwide. I think I think I'll leave it there. I mean, we could spend a week making one bauble, and it would be like me sitting at the piano every day for an hour. I bet by the end of the week. 
my piano playing would be vastly improved. I'd certainly know which keys to hit for that particular tune that I'm, you know, it's just practice, isn't it? Practice, practice, practice. And, uh, but I think what I'd like to do tomorrow, when we get together half hour later, remember 10.30, I'm gonna, I, I, I really wanna do this particular um, bauble with you. And when you see it, you'll think it's really difficult, but it really isn't, it really, really isn't. It's a lot easier than this, is what we're gonna do next. Let me just find my glasses. And then I thought tomorrow we could try this, okay? So this is the one we're gonna go for tomorrow. I know you're looking at it, you're going, you must be kidding. It is really, really easy. It's really easy. And I'm gonna show you how. What we're gonna do is trace it out on a piece of tracing paper. And it's a real, real easy, drawing exercise okay and and it's it's quite systematic and it and we can I'll, I'll, you can follow my lead and then and then what you do is once you've got the skeleton do you remember when we did the I'll leave it like that so you can look at it um, do you remember when we did the um, snowflakes and we talked, we did, we did skeletons, didn't we, of the snowflakes. Let's have a look up close so you can see it. So this is the same thing again. When I've done this netting, which I really, I love these sort of baubles. I don't know if you've got any of these, but they're like pearls. They're, they're like draped, aren't they? Just glorious. And I thought, I really, I've been hankering to do this. I've changed the top so it's really oldie worldy, And then I thought, I want to just... I just want to get the ones that's got little pearls hanging off. So that's why we've been doing a little bit of pearl work today, you see? But I think you'll really enjoy doing this. And then um, we'll do the skeleton on the, that I'll show you. We'll do the skeleton on here, right? And then, and then when we flip it over, that's when we create the outer edge. It's a piece of cake. <laughs> I know, I know, some of you take the mickey out of me when I say it's a piece of cake. It's a piece of cake, okay? And so tomorrow, I thought we'd learn how to construct that. We're just gonna do a total Simon Says on this and we'll just do the bauble and then we'll put a line in, then we'll put the dots in and it's a real easy construction and it's all freehand, okay? You don't need to use the templates. We just need to use the round bauble. Stick to the round one tomorrow. So that's what we're doing tomorrow at 10.30. That will give me an hour's time to do the TV from 9 till 10. I hope you can join me. Then that gives me a chance to re-establish the volume. Do you remember when the volume fell? That's why it did. So I know which buttons to press to get it going again. That will give you a chance to go and get a cup of tea and me. And then at 10.30 we'll go again. And then at 1 o'clock I've got another TV show. So, busy morning, busy morning, but I'm really excited to do that pearly bauble with you because I think you're going to enjoy it. And if you don't do Christmas and you don't do baubles, do the heart, do a heart. Just, it's the same thing, but draw a nice heart or do half a heart, turn it over, you know that like we did on the tracing paper. Look, do half a heart, flip it, do the other half, symmetrical heart if you fancy a symmetrical heart and then come with a symmetrical heart and then you can drape the lace and the pearls around that too same thing just not so it's not a bauble okay so that's what we're going to do tomorrow steve thank you for all your help in the uh, shack shack with our friends and uh, and i'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 30. that's right lots of love bye bye now mm -mm 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 -mm.